Well, hello there, you scrub lords, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be discussing a question that has sort of come up mostly around the dev server and a few questions that have been asked around on the Discord and some concerns that have been laid out by several people within the Discord uh, and the community is at large. And today we're going to ask the question, are thermals overpowered? Now, thermals are obviously a recent addition to the game. We just got them this last patch and it's really only something that you see in top tier. There are night vision devices that you see at lower tiers as, down, as low down as 6.7 with the Panther 2. However, those are definitely not the same thing as a thermal sight. So what are the advantages and disadvantages that thermals offer? Let's start with the advantages. The advantages are that you can see things in the infrared spectrum, meaning that objects that generate heat will give off a thermal signature and appear brighter than the background around them, making stuff like engines, gun barrels, tracks, and suspension units on vehicles stand out far more than they ever would in this normal spectrum. This provides the user of a thermal optic the ability to see targets in dense foliage, uh, behind light cover, or simply picking them out among the environment at a much greater distance than they normally would otherwise. Because, well, again, you're looking for white hot or black hot spots. You're not looking for the distinctive outline of a vehicle. And on paper, being able to simply see things easier within the context of a game like War Thunder, where, especially in realistic and simulator battles, you are entirely reliant on using the Mark I eyeball to spot your targets, having a thermal optic and imager really could be a potential game changer. And in some ways it definitely is. However, there are some unforeseen consequences that I've picked up on after having played for about a week. And that is, number one, situational awareness which it seems to be kind of counterintuitive. You'd think that situational awareness with thermal optics would actually go up, not down. However, in my personal experience, it's actually really, really easy to get distracted with, you know, sitting in the gunner's sight all the time, especially on a lot of these early vehicles, and even many of the top tier vehicles, only the gunner has access to a thermal optic. Only two or three vehicles at top tier actually have a commander's independent thermal imager to observe the battlefield and the thermals via binoculars. Almost all of the vehicles that have thermals have it exclusively on the gunner's optic. It means that you often have a very, very narrow field of view. In addition, you are limited in how far you can scan and how quickly you can scan by the terrain you are on and by the traverse limits, in terms of speed, of the turret traverse. You are also limited in gun elevation and depression. I mean, if you can't look down far enough over a ridge line with your thermal optics, and you want to see there with the thermal optics, on most vehicles you're going to have to drive out and expose the whole vehicle in order to do so. So the idea that thermals are game-breaking and are going to completely destroy the meta and ruin any tier that they happen to be in, where not everybody has them, I think is drastically oversimplifying the issue. Because ultimately, if you are simply driving around and using nothing but thermals, you are seeing things in a very, very narrow field of view. You don't have your head outside the hatch, or if you're an RB in third person, looking around. Your first, uh, your first instinct, if you have a thermal that I've noticed, at least for me, is to not look around so much with third person as to simply jump into the gunner's optic whenever I get the opportunity. And especially with the map filter, I've noticed that I've been getting a lot of close quarters maps. And especially in CQB, Thermals are nowhere near as useful as simply having your head outside the hatch and keeping an eye out. Thermals are useful when you are dealing with rugged terrain that is usually heavily forested or has a lot of brush and foliage. 
because at that point it becomes extremely difficult to tell the outline of a vehicle, especially if it's trying to hide amongst that camouflage terrain. In that case, thermals are great because they allow you to pick out the hot spots that simply stick out of the terrain. However, in a place like an urban environment, where there really aren't that many places to hide behind and there aren't that many things obstructing your view outside of solid buildings, thermals tend to have quite limited value in my experience. Like I said before, restricting your view to such a narrow cone is quite detrimental to you in a close quarters fight, since you need to be looking around you all the time and need to be quite observant as to where you're going. And thermals simply don't offer enough of a field of view to allow for that to be done effectively. I'm not saying it's impossible, but what I am saying is that you're making it far more difficult for yourself if you are simply driving around using nothing but thermals in your gunner's optic. Now for those few vehicles that have the commander's independent thermal viewer, this also sort of applies, although to a much lesser extent. With the commander's optic, you actually can scan as fast as you can move your mouse. Now, whether or not your brain is actually going to be able to pick up the thermal signature or the strange outline of an enemy tank in a thermal viewer when you are moving it at 10,000 DPI, that's up to the individual. But, again, you are also limited in your field of view with the binoculars. The binoculars are great for situational awareness, and I highly recommend using them a lot more than your gunner sight, but even they have their limitations as well. So what I'm saying here is that while thermals do offer a vehicle a, an advantage on paper in the sense that they can detect enemies at longer ranges or in more difficult terrain, it really only helps you if you are stationary and have long sight lines, or sight lines that are obstructed by foliage you can see through. They don't really help you in fast-paced, close-quarters combat. Most vehicles are not particularly suited to utilizing their thermals at 10-20 meters. At that point, you really don't need the thermals for that. Now, where thermals can be useful at closer ranges, or in environments where you're not sure you're taking fire from, is figuring out where the heck you just got shot from. But even then, that's only specific to a very few circumstances. So, are thermals overpowered? I don't really think so. They offer an advantage, for sure, and they add to the depth of the gameplay, but if you don't have thermal optics and you're running up against vehicles that do, especially at a tier like 8.7, where the thermal optics that are there are not the most powerful, I wouldn't say that's a game over. You're not guaranteed to lose the battle just because the enemy team has a thermal optic. Ultimately, it's going to come down to your positioning, how you play, and your shooting. If you're sitting out in the middle of an open field with no cover around you and you stick out like a sore thumb, you're probably going to get shot. doesn't matter if you have a thermal optic. If you are playing in an urban environment and you are being highly aggressive, the thermal optics may not actually be all that useful to you, considering the fact that, well, a vast majority of vehicles only have them in the gunner's sight. If you have them in the commander's sight, that's way better, but it's still not going to guarantee that you're going to see that enemy tank that you just drove past around the other corner when you were looking over your right-hand side and the enemy's on your left. And if you could see the enemy, but your ability to shoot them is either hampered or your shooting skills are not as up to par, well, you've seen him, but what are you going to be able to do to him? If he can outshoot you, then, well, he's going to kill you first. So, in a lot of ways, I think thermals are going to change the game in, the, in a very similar way to ATGMs did, and a, and a subscriber pointed this out in one of my dev server streams, and I thought it was a, I thought it was a very, very good point. Before ATGMs came out, it was possible to drive across open ground with little cover without that much of a worry of being taken out at long range by an enemy gun. It could happen, but there weren't that many guns out there with extreme muzzle velocity at top tier, and therefore it was actually much more difficult to hit a moving target at long range. All of a sudden with missiles, you had a weapon that could 
with no drop hit a target at extreme range and when it did hit the target it had hundreds of millimeters of penetration and would just go straight through you. I remember those days, those early days, when ATGMs first came out and everybody freaked the hell out because, well, all of a sudden they couldn't play the same way that they had before. They had to adapt and create new tactics, move different ways, and create new routes. Thermals are, I think, going to change the game in a very, very similar manner. And in my personal experience so far, they haven't given me much of an advantage one way or another. They are nice to have, but ultimately if you don't have thermals, it's not the end of the world. So what do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Do you guys think I'm missing something? Or do you completely disagree? Please leave your thoughts down in the comment section below, I want to hear them. Without further ado, this has been Many Miles Away. Keep your tracks checked, keep your vinyls in place, keep your vinyls in tube, and I will see all of you guys in the next video.